Hi everyone, this is a tutorial from dwbiconcepts.com. In this tutorial today, we will learn how to handle the scenario of early arriving fact. It may happen during the fact loading, it may appear that there is a source side dimensional natural key appearing whereas the corresponding entry in the dimension table is missing. That is, there is no corresponding entry for the incoming natural key present in the transaction. In that case, we usually perform or insert a dummy row in the dimension table and return the corresponding surrogate key to be populated during our fact loading. In this particular example, we will consider the sales fact which is an incident fact and for the purpose of change data extraction from the transactional table, we will consider the batch load control table as the mechanism of change data capture. Let's go and check the implementation in SAP data services. This is how our jobs looks like. In the initialization script, the extraction date is being taken care so that based on the last date of extraction, the new records or the new transactions, whatever happened in the source sales table gets extracted. This is how the data flow design looks like. This is our so, uh, source transaction table, which is the sales table, followed by a query transform. Over here, we are extracting the change records from the source transaction table based on the column called last updated date. So over here, the where clause is based on where last updated date is greater than the last date of extraction, which is captured in one of the global variable dollar $CDC date. Next, we are performing lookups on the corresponding dimension table to populate our fact table. Over here, based on the source natural keys, we are going to look up our dimension table and return the corresponding surrogate key. So based on the source customer ID, we are lo uh, looking up the customer dimension table and getting the return of customer key which is a surrogate key. In this case, our lookup table is a SCD type 2 and for that reason we are putting the active flag as Y. So those natural key and whose records are valid in the dimension which uh, expiry date is not yet over, those records we want to look up and return the corresponding surrogate key to be populated in the fact table. Next, we are looking up the product dimension table and getting the return value that is the product key, which is the surrogate key. Finally, based on the sales date, we are looking up the date dimension and uh, getting the return value of date key. Next, what I described earlier, the scenario of early arriving fact. It may happen that the source natural key, let's say for this example, customer ID is coming from the transactional table but its corresponding entry is missing in the dimensional load. During the day's load, that record was not available at that time. So in that case, we need to handle that. So if the record is missing in the dimension table, we need to insert that record with all the other attributes left as blank and it will be handled during the dimension table design and it will be loaded the next day or the record will be updated with all the attributes the very next day of loading. And at the same time, since we get a uh, valid surrogate key from the dimension table to maintain the relationship, we can populate our fact table accordingly. So next, we are using a query transform where we are using a new output column to flag the rows to identify whether the record is uh, getting all its corresponding surrogate keys or not from the dimension table or those entries are missing in the dimensional tables. For that, we need to insert records in the dimension table or not. So if the customer key is null or the product key, that is a surrogate key is returned from the customer dimension and the product dimension is null, either is any of them is null, then flag it as one, else flag it as zero. Next, we use a case transform. We are using a label called EAF, early arriving fact, and we are also producing a default label. So those records which are having the flag as zero means they are having valid values of the surrogate keys returned from the dimension table. We will simply straightforward load them into our fact table. We don't need to process them further. And those records which are having a flag of one, it means they don't have a corresponding entry in the dimension tables and we need to insert the record first in the dimension table and get the surrogate key and populate it into our fact table accordingly. So as per the incident fact, we are performing a little bit of format and we are loading our 
fact table, the incident fact table accordingly. And the other flow that is the early arriving flow over here we are using one more query transform. And over here we are using two flags, one to identify whether the customer record is having, whether the customer key is null or whether the product key is null. And it may be happen that both in one com incoming record, both the customer ID and the product ID have valid values, whereas their corresponding entries are not present in customer table or product dimension table. So for that case, we are flagging if the customer key is null, then flag it as one else zero. If product key is surrogate key is null, then flag it as one else zero. And we are using one more output column to get the row number. So over here, generate row number. Next, we are using a case transform. In the case transform, we are taking two levels based on the, we are want to generate two flows, one for the customer and one for the product. So for the customer flow, we are taking where customer flag is equal to one and the product flow where the product flag is equal to one. So for this records, we need to make a corresponding entry into our dimension tables and then load our fact table. So consider a case where when a single incoming record is having both the customer key as null and the product key surrogate key as null. So in that case, that particular record will flow in both these pipelines. The record will flow because this condition is valid. That single record will flow into two pipelines. Next, check the first pipeline. Over here, we are using a query transform to make the format same as that of the corresponding dimension table. So the customer key, which is the surrogate key that needs to be populated from a key generation or a sequence value is currently populated as marked as null. The source customer ID, which is the source side natural key and that's, that is the value we are getting and we can insert that record, insert that value in the tar target dimension as a record. Apart from that, we are using the name field to populate the current row number. I'll tell you why. And apart from that, we have, because customer dimension is a CD type 2, so over here the date from is set to dot dollar date from that is the validity start date, validity end date, the active flag of that record is set to Y and the load date is set to dollar sys date. Next we are using a key generation transform pointing to the customer dimension table and the surrogate key as the generated key column. And finally we are populating that dummy record into our customer dimension and which is obviously a valid record that will be updated the next day and the design of the uh, dimensional loading will be a bit changed because in this case we need to consider if a record is already existing in the dimension table first we need to check whether the name is an integer or not if that's an integer then we need to update that record don't make an unnecessary new entry for that record then the logic will go wrong so we need to make update all its other attributes and if the name is a valid value not an integer then we can simply insert one more record and update or close the existing record in the dimension table. Next we got the key over here the generated surrogate key and from this path we are getting all the transactional table attributes so we join it based on the row number. So now over here you can see that uh, the customer row number is equal to the name because in this column we are populating that row number column. So next uh, over here we are uh, getting all this value coming in. This customer ID was coming from the source transactional table. Customer key because we have just only inserted that record in the dimension table. So we can take the corresponding surrogate key generated by the key generation. We got this customer key product ID is coming from the source transaction during product key was the uh, result of the lookup we performed in the first step. Date key everything is coming from the source. The same applies to the other pipeline that is the product. First we are reformatting the output columns to match with that of our target dimension table which is a product dimension of slowly changing type 1. So product key currently I am populating with null which will be later uh, used by the key generation transform to generate the surrogate keys. Next we have the source product ID 
which is coming from the source transaction table which can populate it safely name we are currently marking it with row number price and load date these are as null and load date is a dollar system date so the very next day when the records comes for the dimension loading of scd type 1 we will it will simply insert or update so based on this source key it will perform a lookup and it will update the rest of this attributes of the product dimension so we don't need to worry any much regarding the design of scd1 everything will be handled accordingly but for scd2 we need to develop one line of extra logic to check whether the uh, record is a early arriving record or not so in other scenario we can also place a flag called early arriving flag in the dimensional table and which will signify that the record is an early arriving fact or not so you can place one or zero so if a record is having ef flag as one that means in that particular day's load we won't update we won't in create a make a new entry for the incoming record rather we should update all the attributes for the new incoming record next after we got the uh, surrogate key from the product dimension based on all other attributes coming from the transactional table we are performing a join based on the row number and next we are taking this uh, output columns uh, customer id coming from source customer key performed lookup during the first step product id coming from the source transaction table product key we just got from the sequence generated generation next we all these columns are coming from source now we are using a case transform so considering the case if the product flag is 1 and the customer flag is not 0 it means that the product uh, corresponding source natural key the entry was not there in the dimension table although the customer record was valid so in that case we are put uh, performing uh, we are going to route that record through a label called product and the other case commission it means bo both the records both the product key and the customer key was missing as a per result of the lookup so based on the product means we just only need to make a lookup of the we need to insert a new record in the dimension and return the surrogate key and we are performing all the trans uh, transformations and we are populating directly to our fact table same applies to the customer for those customer records which are having flag as one and product uh, surrogate key as zero we will straightforward populate them to our corresponding sales fact table and for other set of both the records because in this case one this record a particular record coming with a customer key as blank is got its corresponding surrogate key from this flow and the record which the same record having the product key also blank got the corresponding surrogate key for the product dimension in this flow so over here we will perform a join based on the row number and we will take the customer key product key date key and we will accordingly populate our final fact table the flow is a bit complex but the implementation logic is very straightforward we need to make an entry in the dimensional table first and then we will use that corresponding surrogate key and populate that record or to capture that incident into our fact table rest of the flow is used for the error handling purpose and finally to mark a success entry in the batch load control table if you have any question please visit dwbiconcepts.com thank you